And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Now this box doesn't really do a lot for me. It kind of looks like meh. But the designers of this game have designed some of my favorite Euro games that are out there. So when people came to me and they said, Tom, this game is excellent, I said, all right, I'll certainly give it a try. And I gave it a try, and another try, and well, anyway, let me show you how the game plays. Okay, so you, you can see there's a lot of pieces and a lot of things going on in this game. And the object of this game is to get the most points. Well, big surprise there. And players are going to be, over the course of the game, they're going to be accumulating faith points, and they're also going to be accumulating military. But for the most part, they're going to be getting points around the board. Now, players are going to be doing that by using four workers. The game is sp split into eight rounds. And it's easy to keep track of those rounds because you have four different types of cards that are going to come out. And there are eight cards for each era, there's three eras, eras one, two, and three, so you just shuffle them together and you bring out four new cards in each category each round. And so after the last one, it's over. And I said eight rounds and I meant six. So in these six rounds, in each of the three eras, players are going to be rolling three dice here. So these three dice are gonna be placed down here. So you see I rolled a four black, a, fi a five orange, and a two white. Now that's important because each player has a white worker, an orange worker, a black worker, and then a neutral worker that's just a zero. The value of each of these workers is the number. So this black worker is a worker of four. Everyone has the same workers that they're going to be using. And in turn order, and turn order is here, players are going to be placing those workers out. Now they can place them here in the village. Only one person can go to these spots and get some immediate benefits. You can see here, get five gold, get five workers, get three, move up three on the military track and two gold, or get two different blessings. And the blessings are listed here. A blessing can be one wood and one ore, two workers, two gold, two military, or one faith point. And you can also always send here, as many people can go here. Here you get one of these blessings plus a coin, uh, but also going here will change turn order for future rounds. So those are some pretty simple things to do, but what people are going to want to do a lot of the game is place their workers here and get these cards. Now getting these cards is kind of the main focus of this game. Each card has a different type of thing that they can do, but when you place a worker in these spots, you must the worker must here be one or higher, three or higher, five or higher, or seven or higher. Well that's, first of all, how do you get a seven or higher? And what about this guy here? He's a zero, how can he go anywhere? Well, you can do that by using your assistance. You can spend assistance when you place someone out and add them. So I, let's say I have that orange one. That's a five, if you remember. I can spend two assistance and place him up here on the seven. When you place a worker somewhere, if there's a, something on that spot, you're gonna immediately get it. So here you get money, here you get military points, here you get ore, and here you get wood on, by going on the top spots. But you also get the card that's there. Now, when you take the card, the card may have other costs. You can see here, this card here costs a coin, a wood, and an ore. It has immediate effect here. This one here gives you one faith point. And then this means at the end of the game, I'm going to get an additional five points. So I might want that card, but maybe I want the top one here. This one says, if I have four military, I can lose two of them to take this card, or I, or I can pay one wood, one ore, and two. This will give me three faith points right now, and at the end of the game be worth one point. This one here, I can pay three wood to get it. Gives me four assistance, and at the end of the game, gives me four points. So you can see that the purple cards are all about giving you some immediate benefits. Often they have to do with the military track. And at the end of the game, you're gonna get points from those. I'm gonna jump over to the blue cards. The blue cards are people. They always cost money. So you can see this person here costs four coins, but they give you a special ability. So here, uh, from now on, whenever you go to a blue card, you're plus two to going there. 
Um, so if I put my five die there, it's an automatically a seven and they cost one less gold. Well, that's a pretty neat card to get, but maybe I would prefer to take the Abbess who only costs three and I can immediately take someone else where there's four as if I had a four worker there and she gives me a faith point. Or maybe I want the warlord here who immediately gives me three on the military track and in the future gives me plus two when getting green cards. So blue cards are great for special abilities. And also at the end of the game, the more blue cards you have is going to give you points. You're going to keep your blue cards here and your purple cards here to the side of the board. But at the end of the game, if I have six blue cards, for example, I will get 21 bonus points. So that's pretty impressive. Now the yellow and the green cards, when you get those cards, they're going to be placed here on your board. As you get these different yellow and green cards, they're gonna be placed like this. Sometimes they have immediate benefits. Yellow cards usually give you an immediate benefit of points. You can see here that this card gives you six points. This one gives you two points. The green cards usually give you immediate benefit of some sort of resources. This one gives two or this one gives two military and an assistant. Now, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to have this little piece here that's part of their board. And you can play with that they're all the same, which is this side, or you can play they're different, which would be this side. And when they're different, different things are gonna happen. And this matters for down here. When you place a worker here, you are gonna run your different productions that you have. One runs your yellow cards, which are your buildings, and one runs your production cards, which are the green ones. And the, the die you put there, again, has to be a one or higher. Here though, if you only one person go here, so the first person who goes to each one is gonna be able to run it higher. Everyone else has to go here and they run it for three less. So let's say I'm the first person and I'm running my buildings, my yellow cards. So I put the orange one there, that's a five. So I come here, first of all, if I have a one or higher, I'm going to get a coin and two military. Great. Then, if this card says I need a six or higher for this one to work, so I'm not gonna get anything. But if I did, I'd get a point for every blue card I have. All right, this one needs a three or higher. Great, it's a five. So here I can change one or into three coins or two or into five coins. Hmm, so that could be a useful thing. The more cards you get here, the more you can run it. The green cards, the production cards are very similar. If I had put the orange die there, I would get a wood, an ore, and an assistant. Here, well, it's a six. So I'm not getting anything. I, of course, I could have put an assistant there. If I put an assistant there, I'd also get a faith point and an ore. Here, it's, it needs a four or higher. Great, I have a five or higher. So I'd get two ore. So you can see the more of these you have, the better. However, green cards don't cost anything. They're free. However, to put them on these last four spots, you're gonna need a certain number of military power to be able to go there. Three military power, seven, 12, and 18. However, you'll also notice you're gonna get points at the end of the game for however many are on them. So yellow cards give you points now. Purple cards give you points at the end of the game. Green cards give you this production, and if you get a lot of them, can give you points at the end of the game, and blues can do the same. There's a few other rules. When you place a worker in a column, you pay the cost on the card, right? However, if someone else places a worker in that same column later on, they have to pay an additional three coins. That's just something else that happens for placing in the same column. So the first person in each column is the best. And also you can't have two workers of the same color in a column. Although if you notice your zero worker is not your color, so you could place it in the same column. It's just harder because they're zeros, so you'll have to pay more assistance. So after the end of every era, you need to check your faith because the Pope is now involved. You need at least three faith in era one, four faith in era two, or five faith in era three. If you do, if you have that much, you can pay it and get that many points. You can, and then you will be immune to whatever negative thing will happen here. Or you might decide, hey, I wanna go further on this track so I can get a lot more points, and I don't care about that negative thing because it might not affect you. For example, this one here, if you don't have three faith points at the end of era one, then you are gonna be minus three running your production for the rest of the game. And you'll put one of your cubes here to show that it happens. This one here, if you go here, you can never go to the village again, these four spots. This one here, um, at the end of the game, your blue points aren't gonna score you anything. Then so you might say, well, I don't care, I don't have many blue cards anyway. And these are gonna change. These are different each game. You're gonna pull out one random one for each one. And so 
at the end of the game, whoever is the highest on the military track will get some extra points. You can trade in res extra resources for points, and then you will get points for your purple cards and your blues, and you add up all your points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. I should also mention that there is an expansion included with the game in which each player is going to get some personages here. And you're going to have these at the beginning of the game, and you're going to get three of them, and you're going to look at these people here, these leaders, and these are re requirement costs. So, for example, this guy requires you of four blue cards and two green, four purple and two yellow, six of the different resources. At any point, if you have that, you'll be able to put them out, and then you get a permanent ability. It might be something that lets you do something once per round. This guy, for example, your dice are always fives. This guy always adds two to them. Once per round, you can run a production as if you have a level one. This guy gives you a faith point once per round. And so they're all very different. You can also discard one at any point to get one of these privileges here for free if you don't know what else to do with it. And that's pretty much what the leaders do. They give you kind of some special things to do. Some of them have amazing special abilities, but they're usually much more difficult to pull into play. Like this guy uh, here gives you one of your workers is always a six, but you need five green cards to be able to get him into play. Anyway, that's a mini expansion included with the game. Now, in one sense, there's some problems with this game in that it's just, you know, the whole, hey, it's grinding things out for points, the thing that Z Garcia is always complaining about. But the fact is, is I really like it, all right? It takes a lot of features that they've done in other games like Grand Austrian Hotel and things like that and puts them here. And so what do I like about it? Okay, first of all, I like the worker placement part. I find worker placement, it's a fun mechanism that I enjoy in games. And in this particular one, your workers are going to change. But if the workers are low, so are everyone else's workers. Everyone else's workers are just going to be low too. And then you guys got to figure out how to work with that. Are you going to get some more assistance to bring them up? And I think that that whole numbered workers plus the assistance is a pretty neat idea. Um, you're always going to want everything in this game. You're like, oh, I need more assistance to make my workers better. Oh, I need more money because everything costs money and it, someone else went to the column I went, so I got to pay three gold to go there, etc. You're always going to need those other resources too. You need more wood and ore to build the buildings because the buildings are really useful to get points at the end of the game. And this is a one thing I enjoy about this game is there's a lot of good things to get, but you can't get it all. You can get six blue. You can only have six of the most of any of the cards. You can get six blue cards. You might even be able to get six blue and six purple, but you ain't getting six blue, six purple, six yellow, and six green. It's just not happening. It's just not physically possible because you don't have enough workers to pull that off. And I and I and I kind of enjoy that. Also, people go to the spot you wanted to go, and where do you go each turn? So at some point, you're probably going to go to the turn order spot just so that you're, you're tired of going last. And you have that zero worker who's pretty much worthless. You can't even put him anywhere unless you put an assistant with him to move him up to at least one because every spot on the board needs at least a one. But, I mean, yeah, you might go grab the five assistants. Now he suddenly could be a five if possible. The strategies seem to be balanced. You can go for a high military and get a lot of purple cards for that boom at the end of the game. So final scoring. Get a lot of points now for yellow, build up a machine that starts cranking out points. Of course, to do that, you probably need to get your green machine working too. Go for the special abilities that allow you a lot of things at the end of the game. It's a pretty neat game. The pieces work well. It's really easy on your board. You have spots to put your different resources. And you don't need to be looking things up all the time. I mean, the first time each card is put out, you're probably going to say, okay, this is how these cards work. But they're not. there's not a whole pile of different things like when you saw me explaining them, oh, this one subtracts two from purple cards, you know, this one. And after a while, people start getting that. Oh, okay, that's how this works. And since there's no secretivity to the cards, you're putting out four cards, you just explain the four cards that are there for everybody. Now, because the same cards are going to show up all the time, right? There is um, 18 different cards of each color that are going to show up. And they're going to show up 18, 8 times 2, 16, um, 16 times 3. 30, 48, sorry. Wow, that was, that was really off there. 48 cards of each color. Um, and you're going to learn those cards though as time goes by because they're all going to show up over the course of the game. Those cards are going to come. They're going to pop out. And so obviously people who played this game before are going to say, oh, I know this card exists. So and maybe this card isn't worth getting at any point. But because they come up randomly, there's no way to say this is the first move you should always make because that card may not be out there. 
you also don't know what other people are going to do. So there is some certainly back and forth. The game feels a little bit more interactive than it should be because people are placing workers where I want to. Come on, man, stop doing that. There's not a lot of in-your-face-ness to the game other than that, but it feels like enough. Now, I want to take a break here and, and pause and talk about these leader cards because a lot of people that I've met won't play the game without them. I think I'm kind of there, too. The leader cards give you some really nice abilities. They also give you a little bit of focus. What should I do in the game? Well, this leader says get five yellow cards. Well, maybe I should do that. Some of the leaders are extremely powerful. And once they come into play, that gives that person, like the one that gives you three, your three workers or fives, wow, you don't have to worry about assistance ever again for the rest of the game. Seems overpowered, but I don't think so. It, I, I, it seems like they're pretty balanced. I wouldn't know, but again, I really would play with them just if only to differentiate myself from everybody else and say, okay, this person here, I need to get this thing into play to get that. And if nothing else, I can always chuck one of these for maybe a couple assistants that I really need it, which can really come in handy sometimes on the final turn. So there's all these different cards that you're getting. Then there's that, that faith track. That faith track's interesting because it brings into play that thing that I'm always a big fan of in a game, which is that do this or we will smack you down. Well, that's what, how this works. I like it in this game though, because there is that smack down thing, but sometimes you're like, why do I care? I see that final thing says, I'm not going to get points for my blue cards. I won't get any blue cards this game. Then I don't have to worry about faith, and I can go concentrate on other things. That's a very viable strategy here. Now, for sometimes the thing is so bad, you're like, yeah, definitely I need to get faith points, which makes it interesting because then everyone's fighting over getting the faith points. But you can get them. It's not like you can't do it. You might have to spend uh, actions and things that you were planning to do for other stuff, but you can get the faith points you need. As, as, uh, for, for one and two... It is a guaranteed fact for the first two areas that you can. <sighs> so a lot of what I'm saying may not even make sense to you who have not played this game before. But I will say this. This is a thinky game. This is a game where someone who's played before was well, going to whoop up on new people. But it's also a game that doesn't take too long. I'd say it's 90 minutes, maybe two hours if you're playing a little bit slower. If you're playing with less than four players, it'll definitely be 90 minutes. It offers some good worker placement. It lets you put combos together. I love putting cards and then running a machine. That's something I really enjoy. Um, I actually don't really even know or care about the theme, but the machinery that's in the game, which is really obvious because the, the thin veneer of the theme isn't on top of it, still works out really well. Very big thumbs up for me, Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Ciao!